The bitter herbs that include all of the gentians, including the medicinally used gentiana lutea, all have bitter principles. The medicinal quality, which is valued in the bitter principle, is its ability to stimulate the gallbladder. And when you stimulate the gallbladder, you do several things. It's a natural laxative. You stimulate the production and the release of the digestive enzymes in timing with the food, and you also promote hormone balance. The other native bitter herb in Ireland is uh, menyanthes, which is also called bog bean, and it was commonly used and is used as a, a herb particularly for joint complaints. All of these bitter herbs have a cooling effect on the body, and they are generally because of their combination of actions, effective as anti-inflammatory overall effect. And it looks so dramatic, and, and that doesn't even begin to represent the translucency of the blue in these flowers. Although that looks very dramatic in the photograph, you actually need to look very hard to find the first gentian. These grow in limestone. They normally grow at alpine level. Here in Galway, we're lucky enough to have an extension of the Burren in County Clare, which has a limestone base and a particular minerally deficient terrain in which the gentian actually grows at sea level. So it is one of the very unusual plants and it is, of course, protected. This is only about a centimetre, a centimetre and a half from the ground. So it's very insignificant looking unless you're really seeking it out absolutely beautiful flower. Medicinally, we use the Gentiana lutea, which has a yellow flower. So this is a good time to reflect on the qualities of the herbs. And this depends on the soil integrity. The soil integrity, far from meaning rich agricultural land, often means the integrity which produces the challenging or results in the challenging conditions that leads to the secondary constituents which are often the helpful constituents in normalizing human physiology. You want whole plant integrity. You want not sprayed herbicides or pesticides. And more than that, you want to use the whole part of the plant without adding or subtracting in the way that standardized products are produced. You don't want active constituents removed and added into poor quality material just so that there is a marker for manufacturing purposes, which might mask poor plant integrity. Similarly, if a year has produced herbs of particularly rich in a marker constituent or even an active constituent, that may actually be matching the needs of the environment, the human environment, the kinds of viruses around, the kinds of bacteria. It's hard to be sure because in this day and age of travel, which isn't at the normal speed of an ordinary walking person or even a bicycle or a horse, we're talking about jets and international travel and trains under the Alps. You're talking about kind of speeded up exposure to a whole variety of viruses and bacteria, etc. But the whole plant integrity is a good place to start from. And herbs are complex. Of the 350 constituents, on average, in any one plant, you might find that there are 15 active ingredients there might be, for example, four toxic ingredients. There might be eight constituents that neutralize the toxic elements. There might be vitamins and minerals and other neutral constituents which aren't active substances, but they're not harmful either. So the complexity means that there are multiple constituents acting in multiple places or at multiple sites. For instance, you can have a herb which acts on the colon and also acts on the mucous membranes of the upper digestive tract, and they will integrate together. The safety of herbs is depends on empirical evidence and also scientific evidence, and more and more we need reassurance that the herbal active ingredients or the complex of ingredients in a herb don't interfere with the bioavailability of medications, particularly if these are medications 
with a very narrow therapeutic index. And by that, I mean that a small change in the dose will make a big difference to the efficacy of the medication or to the toxicity of the medication. There are some herb drug interactions that we need to be particularly careful with. Most of the herbs that may interact aren't a feature of Dr. Clare's herbal blends, but it is something that needs to be borne in mind. And in general, the, the blends of teas and herbs in the range of Dr. Clare's products would be of the very mild to moderate and would not affect and would not have a huge interaction with many drugs. But they are designed for people who are not taking drugs and that's really their role and their limitation. The herbs in Dr. Clare's blends are designed for people who are not on medication. If you are on medication or if those you are advising are on medication, expert advice should be sought from a well-qualified medical herbalist or from a pharmacist or from a medical advisor. Within those guidelines, there are some blends that we can uh, happily combine with over-the-counter medication. These include using the uh, chest and sinus blend and sinus tea with antibiotics. And also the herbal blend for allergies can safely be used with over-the-counter or prescribed antihistamines. For anybody who is on herbs that uh, affect blood clotting in particular, on cardiac medication, blood pressure medication, any other medication groups should not be taken with Dr. Clare's blends in the absence of expert advice. The Materia Medica accompanying this course will provide all of the individual reactions known to any of the herbs in the blends and they are there to advise you of any particular interactions but expert advice should still be sought.